Why do you think abortion is such a huge issue this election cycle? It feels like it was one of the many issues in the past, but right now it feels like it's like the one that is talked about the most. It's because we're hard-hearted. It's because we don't care. It's because we will, we're willing to sacrifice our unborn children on the altar of our sexual convenience. And we are a sexually confused, twisted, and self-centered culture. And the natural love that we're supposed to have for the innocent has been completely contorted. And we have become numb to the argument. On, on the algorithm, it's no mistake on any social media that if you punch in the word abortion, it will be blocked. So you have to spell it with different symbols on there filling in some of the letters so that you can actually get follow you can you can actually get trends and if you try to post any pictures of an abortion so that people can actually see what is taking place in the holocaust in our nation thank you by the way um if you try and post any pictures it will be blocked as too graphic uh it's it's because there's an all-out assault and i believe it it's, uh, it's satanic. Now, with that said, I want you to understand that I know that even listening and part of our congregation and part of our church and our community, there's many women that have experience with abortion. And I know this, I know that there's a lot of trauma connected to that. I know that there's a lot of pain that's connected to that, maybe some guilt and shame uh, that's connected to that. Listen, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. We're not throwing stones, but listen, I don't have to throw stones to defend an innocent person. And also to say to those who have been a part of that, say you were lied to, uh, you may have been duped, you may have been deceived, you may have uh, been in a situation where you were pressured and coerced, and Jesus heals, Jesus forgives, Jesus saves, Jesus can restore, and we don't cast stones. But just because we have empathy for those who have been a part of that doesn't mean we remain silent about the issue. Um, and in this, in this cycle, it's interesting to me, it feels to me, it's almost as if abortion has become a secular sacrament where we as followers of Jesus receive communion where Jesus sacrificially laid down his life and his body and we remember his blood and his body broken for us, sacrificed so that we could be saved. And there's like this weird counterfeit where we now have a sacrament called abortion or pro-choice position where we celebrate abortion as a way of celebrating our freedom for self, not from self. And, uh, and I... I I tell you, it is a stain on, on our nation right now. And even though that both parties have shifted, when we're talking about policy, I have to look and say, okay, number one, as, as a pastor, as a leader, and as a Christian, I'm called to be a prophetic voice to both sides of the aisle. And if I ever had an audience with, if Trump were to win and I had an audience with Trump, trust me, there would not be a photo op before there is a conversation. And the conversation is, I know that you changed your position on abortion because consensus in America is changing and you wanted a vote. But I'm telling you, sir, you will stand before Almighty God as the 45th and the 47th president of the most powerful nation on the earth. And 1.5 million abortions every single year will either be on your hand or not on your hand. And the same is true for Kamala Harris and the same is true for Joe Biden. And that's what it means for us to be Christians. But I'm looking at policy and going, okay, who's going to give me the best policy? Who's going to give me the most protection? Who's going to give us the greatest opportunity for states to be able to put laws uh, protecting the unborn? And so that's the sliding scale that I have to look at. Uh, the other policies that I think are important are family. Uh, what, what protects the family? What's going to give me the most freedom of worship, the freedom of speech, the freedom of gathering and assembling together? What, uh, what platform is going to protect Israel and support Israel? Because God said, he who blesses Israel will be blessed. He who curses Israel will be cursed. And who is going to protect the life and the bodies of our children? Because we are living in a moment right now where we are okay with mutilating children's bodies in the name of gender dysphoria instead of helping them psychologically, and we're celebrating that. Big Pharma is making billions off of this, and we're putting children on hormone blockers, and in some cases, they're doing it without parents even being notified. This is an assault against the family, and I'll tell you what, I will never cast my vote for any party that supports that. 